This video provides a brief overview of how to use the Google Analytics interface. If you're new to Google Analytics, or you'd like to pick up a few tips on how to use some of the different features, this video is a good place to start. When you first sign into your Google Analytics account, you'll see this screen which shows a list of your profiles. If you're just starting to use Google Analytics, you'll probably just have one profile. Click View Reports to get started. Let's look at the dashboard, which is the first report you'll see. The dashboard is where you put all the summary information about your site that you want to see at a glance. To add a report to the dashboard, just go to the report that you want to add, and then click Add to Dashboard. And here, going back to the dashboard, if I scroll to the bottom, is the traffic sources overview that I just added. On the dashboard itself, you can position the report summaries however you like, and delete the ones that you don't need. One nice feature about the dashboard is that it lets you jump directly to the specific report you've saved. So here, I've jumped directly from my dashboard to a full report on California. So now might be a good time to go to your most important reports and put them on your dashboard. In the left-hand navigation, you'll see that your reports are organized into groups. Anything about visitors, where they're located geographically, what their language preferences are, how frequently they come to your site, and which kinds of computers and browsers they use is found in the Visitors section. The Traffic Sources section shows you how people got to your site. This is where to look if you want to see which keywords people use or which ads they click on. Content is all about the pages on your site, which ones were most popular, which ones served as entry pages to your site, and which ones were the pages from which people exited your site. If you've defined conversion goals, the goals reports show you conversions and conversion rates. A goal is a website page which a visitor reaches once they have made a purchase or completed another desired action, such as a registration or a download. Defining goals and monitoring conversions is an important way to measure how well a site contributes to your business objectives. The e-commerce section contains your merchandising, transaction, and revenue activity reports. You don't have to use the left navigation to get to reports. The reports themselves contain links and suggestions to help you discover new information. The active date range is always displayed at the upper right of your reports. Click the arrow next to the displayed date range and then type in your dates, or use the calendar, or the timeline to select a date range. Click Apply. You can compare two date ranges against each other. Under Comparison, select Date Range. And here's a tip. Instead of, for example, just comparing September with August, I'm going to line up the dates so that I can compare weekdays with weekdays and weekends with weekends. Since the first day of September is a Friday, I'm going to shift my 30-day comparison period so that it starts on Friday, July 28th instead of August 1st. Next, I'm going to activate the Compare to Date Range option here. Now, when I look at the graph, I can make meaningful day-by-day -day comparisons, comparing Fridays to Fridays, Saturdays to Saturdays, and so forth. On reports that contain graphs, you can select the metric that you want to graph over time. In this report, we're graphing visits. So let's change it to average pages per visit. Or, you can compare two metrics against each other. For example, here we're comparing average pages per visit versus the goal one conversion rate. There is the average pages per visit in blue, and the goal one conversion rate in yellow.
Unless you're comparing two date ranges, you have the option of comparing metrics against the site average. Here, we're looking at the average pages per visit for AdWords visitors, that's the blue line, versus average pages per visit for the average visitor, that's the thin gray line. Most reports have a scorecard and then a table below the scorecard. The scorecard summarizes all the data that's included in the table. So here, for example, we're looking at AdWords traffic from three keywords. There were 57 visits from people who came in on these keywords. And on average, each visitor saw 18 pages and spent about a minute and a half on the site. Most of these visits were from new visitors, people who had never been to the site before. And over 19% of them left after seeing only one page. Looking down at the table, you can see the same data broken down for each keyword. To look at your conversions and conversion rates, you click the Goal Conversion tab. To look at your e-commerce activity, you click the e-commerce tab. The Clicks tab is unique to the AdWords reports, and it shows you AdWords-specific metrics that we'll look at in detail in another video. You can always get an explanation of any one of the metrics on the scorecard by clicking the question mark bubble. You can segment table data in different ways, using the segment pull-down. So if you want to see this AdWords traffic broken out by city, you just select city from the pull-down. You can use the buttons at the upper right of the scorecard to visualize your data, as a pie chart, a bar graph, a comparison to site metrics, or as an aggregate summary. Finally, you can facilitate information sharing and collaborative decision making by emailing reports. To email a report, click the email button that appears at the top of each report. You can send the report immediately or set up a regularly scheduled email. Or, you can add the report to an email that you've already scheduled. So now might be a good time to try creating a few scheduled emails from some of your most important reports. Exporting data into other formats is another tool for sharing and collaborating. To export a report, you just click the export button at the top of the report and select the format you want. And here's a tip. If you want to create a high-resolution, print-ready presentation, export your report to PDF. The PDF reports are vector-based, and so they scale to a large size and still look great.